Today, we're going to be talking about getting your ex back by letting go. This isn't exactly what a lot of people think it is when they initially hear about this. We're going to be talking about what it actually is and how to do it and what's going on on a deeper level. Please stay tuned through to the end because, of course, we will be doing a question and answer session at the end of this video. Plus, we'll also be uh, giving you some tangible advice that you can go ahead moving forward. But before we go ahead and get into all of that, hello, my name is Clay with ModernLove.Life. We are here to help you get the great loving relationship that you want without having to play mind games, without having to play hard to get, and without having to pretend to be someone or something that you are not. Because you, of course, deserve to be loved for the unique, amazing, and wonderful person that you are. So when it does come to this whole idea of letting go, um, oftentimes people think that the, the act of desiring something and wanting it and focusing in on it and even, you know, maybe even micro analyzing all of the, the, the little minutia of it, you know, Oh, you know, who is that uh, person that he started following on Instagram? Or like, why did she like that person's post on Facebook? Or uh, why did it take them, you know, um, three hours to respond when they could have just responded right away? All of this sort of stuff. Um, when you focus in on this stuff, you're obviously not letting go. But instead, you're, you're, you're really attaching yourself to something to outcome to them to whatever it might be to you know elevating them to this certain level putting them on a pedestal even to some degree um and it, it it's not that your attachment or your desire is going to make it more likely to happen um it's that when you detach, something interesting energetically happens that actually makes it a whole lot easier, okay? Because when you are attached, you sort of are hyper-focusing in on something and you close yourself off to all other possibilities. You close yourself off to things unfolding a certain way and you just get laser-focused in on a certain path to the point that there's no room for flexibility. Um, you know. Um, uh, we'll, that, well, I'll spare you that story. But um, what what actually ends up happening here is that um, when you let go, you're actually engaging with a certain conversation, a certain relationship within yourself. And this is something that's, that's kind of important here. You know, um, oftentimes people are pretty familiar with the concept of an inner child. You know, um, people have just kind of widely heard about this whole idea of an inner child over, I don't know, the past, you know, couple decades or something. It's, it's, it, most people know what that is. And, um, you know, your, your inner child is probably where a lot of your, um, emotions are coming from your uncomfortable emotions are coming from at least at least the ones that you know aren't you know imminently justified like if there's actual physical danger and you're feeling afraid then okay that makes sense like if i don't know there's someone trying to mug you or something okay that that totally makes sense but um if you're i don't know afraid that uh, something might not go your way or you're um, you know, worried about some situation at work or your relationship or family or something like that, then um, chances are it's really sort of your your inner child. You know, if you could imagine a small version of yourself, a small version of, I don't know, Clay or or um, um, Karel, who, who's the one person who's left a, a comment so far, which is uh, unusual for this far in the live stream. But hey, you know, whatever. Um, welcome. Um but uh, uh, it, you, you, there's this sort of inner child within you who feels concerned and upset and, con and, and afraid and insecure and anxious and all of these sorts of things. And, you know, much like uh, a, a real child might work themselves up thinking that, you know, there's a monster under their bed or there's some bully at school that's causing problems or something like that. Um, hello, Alan. Um, your inner child is going to potentially grab onto these things and uh, be preoccupied with them. And 
you know, if you just sort of leave the child to themselves, which is what a lot of us do when it comes to our inner child, um, they're going to continue to work themselves up. Every, you know, night in the bed is going to be, you know, a, a terrible experience because, you know, they're worried that the monster in their closet or monster under their bed is going to come and get them or they're, they're worried that they're going to have another, you know, altercation with the bully or whatever it might be, right? Um, and they're, they're having this emotional experience almost calling out to their parent and, uh, you know, a good parent would step in and say, okay, you know, here's what we can do. Let's, let's, you know, look under the bed with a flashlight and you can hide behind me or something. And we'll, we'll, I'll show you there's no monster there. Or they might, you know, play into the kid's imagination and, you know, make up some, you know, monster repellent by mixing some food coloring with some water and putting it in a spray bottle. I don't know. Um, um, or they might give them some strategies on how to deal with the bully or how to deal with whatever the issue is or, or something like that. And that's kind of what your inner child is doing when it's flashing these, um, you know, anxiety or fear or insecurity signs to you. It's saying, hey, there's something wrong. And what happens when we just ignore it, which, you know, hey, a lot of us are doing because we, you know, never really thought about it this way or never thought about exploring things on this level. Um, but we're actually just kind of neglecting our inner child and just saying like, hey, you know, if there's a monster under your bed, deal with it. Hey, if, if there's a bully, you know, you'll figure it out, right? And that, of course, is just going to allow the inner child to run away with its own thoughts. And what happens is when we actually let go, we are teaching ourselves and we're teaching that inner child that we're going to be okay no matter what happens. Because if we're so fixated in on our ex, if we're so fixated in on, you know, it has to be this way, it's not going to, like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to experience unending suffering and pain, or I'm not going to be able to handle it or whatever, if my relationship doesn't work out, um, then uh, then that's basically the, 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 the call to the inner child that says, hey, something isn't right. And I would like my my inner adult to kind of step in here and help me with this. And so, you know, what we can do is to actually encourage ourselves to emotionally let go because what what typically happens is there's this wall um, emotionally that sort of divides us, at least in regards to the situation at hand, into two parts emotionally. You know, there's the emotions that we can have and then there's the emotions and thoughts and feelings and such that we're not going to give ourselves permission to because we think, you know, something bad is going to happen. You know, I told you this story um, um, probably a couple times now at this at this rate on this channel about, you know, how my mom had some health issues and then um, last month she ended up having a heart attack and I had to, you know, go and deal with that for a while. And, um, you know, during this time, I, I noticed this sort of wall within myself and it was like, okay, hey, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go take care of mom. I'm going to go take her to the hospital and do all the things that I need to do. And there was this sort of off limits, emotional part of myself that said, hey, what if this is it? What if my mom is going to die? And I, you know, it was always kind of there in the back of my mind, but I wouldn't really let myself go there. And so there was that wall separating these thoughts and feelings that were okay, and then these ones that weren't. And many times I think um, people that I talk to have a similar kind of experience when it comes to you know, hey, these are the thoughts and feelings I can have about my ex or my relationship or my partner or even myself as it relates to, you know, the this relationship part of my life. And here are the ones that aren't okay for me to have. Like, I can't let go. Otherwise, that means I don't care. I can't let go. Otherwise, that means I'm not going to get it. If I don't get this relationship back, then it means, you know, maybe I'm not worthy of love. Maybe it means, um, you know, my love story isn't going to unfold. Maybe it means, um, you know, uh, uh, love, love is just a myth, an illusion. I don't know. It could be whatever it is for you. But I'm asking you to at least consider um, just allowing yourself to drift over into that other side of the wall and to just experience in a, in a simple kind of way. You know, I'm not asking you to go to the ultimate heart of darkness here, although you can if you feel brave, but just sort of gently drift into some of that darkness and just experience what that might feel like for you. Can you sit in that darkness and start to um, 
determine what it feels like to let yourself think those thoughts. You know, like when, when I had some spare time, when my mom was, you know, in the throes of all of the, the health stuff, you know, I, I started to actually sit there at night and just sit, think like, okay, like, what if this is it? What if my mom really is going to pass away? Can I, can I sit in that emotionally for a little while? And all I'm asking you to do is to say, Hey, can you go ahead and sit in, in the, in the darkness for a bit? Can you say, Hey, what if this is it? What if, um, you know, you and your partner never get back together? What if, what if you never hear from them again? What if, what if they do move on? What if they do end up in a rebound relationship? What if, what if, um, you know, whatever, fear you might have actually comes true. Can you send that, find peace in that, and then um, find a little bit of even, dare I say, comfort in that? Not that it means that you're giving up. Not that it means that you can't have a preference in it. Because, you know, like, obviously I don't prefer my mother to pass away right now. Um, um, and likewise, I'm sure you probably don't prefer to just, you know, give up on your relationship. But if you can emotionally get to the point where you let go, you're going to be training your inner child and teaching your inner child as a loving parent that things are going to be okay no matter what. And when that happens, that's when something very interesting happens. And, and, and before we go ahead and get into that, if you do like this video, please hit that thumbs up button for, for YouTube, uh, subscribe to this channel, hit the bell icon, and please just drop a nice comment down below to help me out with my low self-esteem so that I can feel motivated to make more of these nice videos, or at least do it to help me with the YouTube algorithm. Anyway, um, when you start to do this, something interesting starts to happen, and that is that you have begun to let go emotionally. Okay. Now, again, this doesn't mean that you're not going to get back together with them. This doesn't mean that you're giving up. This doesn't mean that you're, you know, moving on and dating like a million other people or anything like that. All it means is that, you know, deep down to your core that you're going to be okay, no matter what, whether or not they text you, whether or not they, you know, um, meet up with you, whether or not they, they want to get back together with you, whether or not whatever thing that you're in the middle of right now, uh, happens the way that you want it to, or it doesn't. You can have a preference. I want to make that very clear. You can have a preference, but um, you know that you're going to be okay and that you're going to make it no matter what. You know, not just on an intellectual level, but in a deep emotional level, you know. Um, and, you know, I, I, think, I think all of us can say that, right? You know, I don't know how old all of you all are, but I am 40 years old. And for better or worse, I have made it for the past 40 years. And I will probably continue to, to make it and survive, you know, for hopefully many more years to come. Um, I'm, it may not have always been pretty, may not have always been graceful, and things have definitely not gone the way that I want them to all the time, but I am still here, I'm still breathing after 40 years. I've made it, right? Um, and I'm probably going to continue to, to handle things that happen in life moving forward. And, you know, sure, that's an intellectual understanding if you're just listening to this. But if you go through this process that we've talked about, it will open up a emotional understanding, which is going to be much more powerful. I mean, I don't know anything about the science, but I've heard somewhere that, you know, the the, the, the emotions are something like 60 times more powerful than than the brain. So um, for, for, for all of for all of you overthinkers out there, just know that there's something a whole lot more powerful uh, down there if you can let go of that, um, you know, left-brained, logical-leaning side of things. But anyway, um, when all of this happens, um, you become more detached from outcome. It becomes almost okay if they want to take their time to respond to you or if they don't feel comfortable with something yet or, or whatever. I, again, you can have your preference, but... It's not going to send you into that earth-shattering place where you feel devastated, you feel heartbroken, you feel back, back in damage control mode or whatever it might be. Um, so I'd strongly consider letting yourself go there, letting yourself have that um, emotional experience of, of, okay, can I just drift into the darkness a little bit just to, just to find a little bit of peace of mind there, to find a little bit of emotional acceptance there. 
And then, you know, from there, as you start to do this in a, in a, in a, in a consistent way, you're going to be teaching your inner child how to find more comfort and to teach them that, Hey, they're not alone. And just like how, you know, going through something even truly difficult and traumatic as an inner adult, as, as an adult, you might say to a child, you know, Hey, you're right. It is tough. It is scary. And I don't know if this is going to go the way we want it to, but you know what? We're going to get through this one way or another together. And you can have that kind of relationship with your inner child. And when that happens, you can let go emotionally. And when that happens, that's when you start to actually interact with your ex in a much different way. You know, you're not going to be as much in damage control mode. You're not going to be walking on eggshells or anxious or overanalyzing everything. You're probably going to be a whole lot more relaxed. You're probably going to be a whole lot more easygoing. You're probably going to be a whole lot easier to talk to, easier to connect to. You're probably going to be a whole lot more present because you're not, you know, busy trying to read the signs and the signals and uh, wonder, you know, what does it mean when they when they do this? I, I saw in some body language, whatever video that, you know, this means that, that, that they hate your guts or something. I'm just making something up here. Um, or, um, um, you know, what does it mean when they... Uh, looked away when I asked them about this, to, you know, what does that mean? But instead, you're actually able to be more present with them. And when you're more present, you're able to be more curious and emotionally accepting and actually able to connect more on that emotional level. And when you're able to connect more on that emotional level and be curious and accepting, you're able to respond to things in a more uh, uh, authentic sort of way. You know, you're not going to get lost in collapsing or posturing. And when that happens, you're going to be able to communicate what you want in a much clearer, more concise sort of, sort of way as well, too. And when that happens, that's when they start to see, hey, there's something different about you now. You're easier to talk to. You're easier to get to, to connect with. And, you know... That's oftentimes what people will artificially try to recreate by, you know, following, you know, whatever dating advice that says, hey, you know, uh, just just pretend like you're hard to get. Just pretend like you don't care. Just pretend like you're easygoing. Just pretend like uh, you're this or that or whatever. But again, you know, you can only fake it up until a certain point. As they say, you know, when the tide goes out, you see who's swimming naked. And there will always be a time when the tide goes out. There will always be some sort of situation where you get caught off guard, where, um, you know, they surprise you as something that you didn't expect. You're, you're, you're in some sort of situation where it's like, oh, hey, look, here you are. And, and here you are with your rebound. And uh, uh, how do I respond to this? Right. And I mean, I don't know. You could just go like way to the extreme end to just, you know, be hyper analytical, hyper overthinking and plan for like a million and one contingency plans um, and just memorize all sorts of different witty comebacks and how to pass all the tests and all that. You could do that. Fine. Fair enough. Um, enjoy that if that's how you want to spend your, your life force and everything like that. Um, or you can just simply embody all of this. You could just simply work through some of this emotional stuff and come out the other side of it, a stronger, more resilient, more easygoing, more easy to connect with person. The thing is, if you do that, you get to keep all of the growth that you've gone through. You get to keep all of the transformation that you've gone through. If you just memorize a bunch of clever one-liners and um, you know, practice and rehearse a bunch of hypothetical situations, on the other side of it, if those things, you know, happen or not, all you have is just a bunch of time that you spent in your mind overthinking stuff. You don't have an actual legitimate transformation. Anyway, um, that's how you can let go of things to actually get back together with your ex. Once again, if you like this video, please make sure you hit that thumbs up button for YouTube. You can help me out uh, with this channel and also subscribe and hit the bell icon and just, you know, drop a nice comment down below. That'd be really helpful as well, too. Let me know what you think about all of this and all that sort of stuff. Um, so today, uh, we, we don't have any super chats. And so we'll just go ahead and just, um, you know, answer some questions as they come up. Um, Karel says hello. Ellen says hello. Hey there, everyone. Uh, hello. Let's go works. Let, letting go works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's tricky and you have to, um, 
I mean, depending on where you're at emotionally, you have to have a little bit of trust in the process, but it definitely does work. Um, and it's also something that can be an interesting adventure if you're open to it. You know, it takes a certain kind of person to just actually look at their emotions and process them and go through them rather than someone that's just like, oh, well, hey, you know, it was a breakup. Life is tough. Sometimes these things happen. We just fumble on to the next relationship and make the same mistakes over and over again. I mean, that's that's probably what most people out there would do. But it takes a certain kind of person, um, the kind of person that I uh, that I like spending time with um, to actually look at their emotions, examine them and dig a little bit deeper. Um, Doug Gard, if I'm saying it correctly, uh, says, I need your help in my situation. It is complex. Okay, uh, I, I don't see a, a question. So, um, hey, maybe you can post it. I don't know. Um, moving on, we have Jennifer who says, I love your videos. Uh, still working on one. Well, thank you very much. Um, we separated in January. He rebounded in March and we were communicating. Um, not now. Not sure what that means. Um, he moved in with her two weeks after meeting. He says he still loves me and misses. I guess misses, misses you. Um, why is it I can heal correctly and he can't be alone? I'm hurt and heartbroken. Why is he not seeming to be? Why is he not seeming to be as much as me? Um, yeah, not, not, not sure if I'm following exactly, but I, th I think what you're wanting to know is like, why is it so hard for him to be alone? And why is he not focusing on himself the same way that you are and growing as a person and, and all of that stuff? And, you know, again, people are just different. People are going to approach things differently based off of all sorts of things in life, you know what their interests are, what their past experiences have been, what they value and all of that stuff. Some people, you know, are, are willing to kind of stare that darkness in the eye and walk through it. Sounds like that might be you, you know, working on um, dealing with your emotions, resolving them, coming out the, the, uh, the other side, um, a stronger person. And other times people don't want to do that. Um, oftentimes, a little bit of a side rant here, but oftentimes, People just more and more these days are having a harder time dealing with discomfort. And in a lot of ways, it's because of these things, these, these, these things that we all have in our, in our pocket here. Um, and that's because we're no longer able to just go through life and to face these small moments of discomfort. You know, um, back before we had smartphones, you know, we just had like regular cell phones that you couldn't really do anything on except for like call someone or send a text message or something. Um, and even before that, you know, there was there was I'm I'm old enough at 40 years old to remember a time when uh, we didn't even have cell phones at all. And, you know, back in those days, if you, you know, just wanted to, you know, go through your life. There'd be times when you couldn't just look something up. There'd be times where you couldn't just, you know, oh, see what people are up to on social media or something like that. And you just had to go through the, the process of waiting for a bus or waiting at a doctor's office waiting room or um, just, you know, walking somewhere and not having a podcast to listen to or, or a book or something like that, an audio book to listen to. Um, and in those moments, we had to face moments of minor discomfort, you know, possibly being bored waiting for a bus stop or possibly just, uh, you know, not having anything better to do than to just look at some random dull magazine in a waiting room or, you know, whatever it is. And so we'd have to actually experience what most of us would probably agree as minor discomfort. But because we don't have to do that anymore, we can just take out our phone and just see what people are up to online. We can just, you know, say, oh, what's the news? What's what what are my friends up to? What are what's so and so up to? Oh, did I get a did I get a new email? Uh, you know, let me see how how the the, the 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 sports team that I'm into is doing or let me see what my stocks or investments did today. And, you know, there's no shortage of things that you can do. And what that does is it trains us to turn away from the present moment when we're uncomfortable. And um, Obviously, if we're going to 
condition ourselves to turn away from the present moment when it's just a little bit uncomfortable, when we're bored waiting for a bus or something. What do you think the odds are that when we're uncomfortable in a big way, like, you know, when we're going through a breakup or something, that we're going to turn away from the present moment and try to numb ourselves out with a rebound relationship or, you know, drugs or alcohol or, um, you know, whatever, some, some other distraction, some other diversion, right? I think it's probably pretty high. And that, I think, is why a lot of times people are choosing things like rebound relationships rather than, you know, staring the darkness in the eye. I do think that it's very um, courageous of you to do that, Jennifer. And, I, I, you know, I, I, I want you to continue to do that because what, what happens when we get accustomed to turning away from the present moment additionally is that we also make connecting that much harder because we're not able to actually experience empathy as deeply, experience emotional connection as deeply with other people because, hey, you know, human relationships sometimes have uncomfortable moments where you have to have, you know, a disagreement with someone or where uh, you have to disappoint someone and tell them, hey, you know, I, I, I know I said I was going to come over this weekend, but actually I can't because X, Y, Z. And you actually have to hear that um, um, disappointment on in their voice on the phone or something like that. And so uh, people are just connecting a lot less in a, in a, and definitely in a, in a more shallow sort of way, uh, but also in a, in a, in a less meaningful sort of way, and also just less in general because of technology. Um, anyway, Jennifer, hope that helps you out. Um, I saw that there actually was a super chat that came in. It looks like, looks like two of them. So we'll go ahead and go through those. Um, Alan says, hey, Clay, hope you're doing well. Um, you've helped me shift my thinking, and I want to let you know that I appreciate that. Well, well, thank you very much. Um, Alan says, uh, recently, I've felt as if my ex has been distancing herself from me as conversations have diminished. She keeps telling me about how she goes out to parties and clubbing and has fun. Um, I've had some of those statements Um get to me at times and it's put me in a situation where I don't reply for long times or uh, I, I guess just give one word responses. Uh, we still talk every day and it seems like she continues conversations even though um, I shorten it out. Um, I'm kind of confused as to what to do. I want her back. How would I approach this? Um, okay, so basically it, it does sound like she's kind of turning away from the present moment as I <laughs> sort of ranted about a few moments ago. I, I did not set that up. I did not see your comment until I read it out loud. Um, but uh, it does sound like she's turning away from the present moment. And, you know, whatever. That That's just how some people are doing it. And so um, your her, her comments, too, about how she's, you know, partying, you know, doing whatever, going out, all that sort of stuff, it's, it's getting to you because you're trying to, you know, maybe do some deeper work. You're trying to, you know, connect with her in a deeper way or something. But she's going through this sort of emotionally unavailable phase. And that's, you know, I mean, I guess kind of understandable because most people are probably going to be emotionally unavailable in some capacity after a breakup, you know, even, even like, you know, regular normal people. Um, but oftentimes regular normal people will, 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 will go through that sort of trough of emotional unavailability, come out the other side of it and be ready to be available again. Whereas longer term emotionally unavailable people will, probably just keep on being un emotionally unavailable. In fact, they probably were emotionally unavailable before the breakup and all that. And they're just probably going to continue to do that um, moving forward. I mean, until they have some sort of, you know, personal epiphany of some sort. Um, and I don't know, maybe that's where she's at. Maybe she's just going through that uh, trough that like a normal person would go through. You know, sometimes breakups hit people differently than others. And sometimes people are are just dealing with that intensity by trying to distract themselves. I mean, I mean, you probably know this. There's there's no shortage of people out there in this whole like breakup space that say, hey, time heals all wounds. So you just need to distract yourself from your feelings until enough time has happened that your wounds naturally heal themselves. Right. I mean, like obviously that's that's when you think about it. <laughs> I hope I hope you see the fallacy in that advice. You know, it's like, yeah, your your broken leg will heal itself. So all you need to do is just pretend your leg isn't broken and just go about your life until it heals because we all know that, you know, it takes a bone, 
I, I don't I don't even know how long it takes a bone to mend, but we all know it takes a, I'm just going to make something. We all know it takes a bone uh, a month to mend. Um, so you just need to ignore the pain and ignore the fact that you have a broken leg for a month and, uh, you know, it's, it's just going to make itself better on its own, right? Um, you know, a lot of times people will tell you that advice, just, you know, distract yourself and uh, pretend that, that, that everything's fine because time heals all wounds. I disagree with that. We can get into that some other time, but that could just be kind of like where she's at. And so, you know, what I, what I'd recommend is, uh, probably trying to connect with her, trying to pull it down to that emotional level, trying to build that rapport as we've talked about before, um, you know, in things like relationship repair over at modernlove.life slash relationship repair, um, uh, where you can, you know, do that rapport building. And then once you're actually able to get into that state of rapport, that's actually the perfect time to bring up more sensitive issues. Um, you know, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna land a lot better. I mean, you know, you can, you can bring up sensitive issues whenever, but it's, it's just going to be a roll of the dice. But usually if you're able to get into that state of deep emotional connection, it's going to land a lot better when you're able to say, Hey, it's really cool that we're able to talk like this. I've, I've really missed this. You know, now that we're here and now that we're both connecting like this, I just wanted to, to, to let you know, Hey, here's something that's been on my mind. And that's when you can bring it up. Um, again, of course, you could just throw a shot in the dark and just see what happens but that's probably a little bit more risky. Anyway, that's what I'd that's what I'd recommend. I'd recommend just like bringing this up with her and uh, uh, talking this out with her and just seeing kind of like where she's at emotionally. Is she just looking for a cotton candy kind of life or is she um, just, just, you know, going through something and dealing with it in her own way? Or maybe she is trying to process it, but she's also trying to, um, I don't know, deal, you know, deal with, deal with things in, in whatever way she might be in. I, I'd, I'd talk to her about this get into rapport, have a conversation if you need to, you know, maybe do a same team conversation as well too. But that's, that's what it sounds like there, Alan. Um, hope that helps you out. We also got a, where to go? Got to scroll through these here. Okay. We also have a um, message here from um, Rideshare. Oh, hey there, buddy. I, I, I remember that name. Um, my wife is making steps to repair our marriage, but still is sometimes hesitant and uh, talks with me and talks to me with attitude, even though I am seeing changes. Um, there we go. I'm also noticing that she is following her best friend's shadow um, style hair and clothing, I guess, basically just um, as, as my daughter says when she's, you know, playing copycat with someone, you know. Copying you, uh, <laughs> my, my, my daughter's four years old. Um, I don't know how, how to get her back to herself. Okay. Um, yeah. What I, what I would do is I probably, uh, oh, there's, there's a, there's a couple more things here. I think I'm, I'm sorry. My, uh, software is kind of jumping around here. So I'm just going to scroll down. Oh yeah. Um, we have been intimate twice in one month. She pulls back, takes control, uh, but then almost forgets the moment. Um, oh, that's someone else. There we go. Uh, I don't know if I should keep fighting or just walk away. Okay. So, you know, you can go ahead and walk away. That's, that's, that's totally fine. There's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with choosing to do something, uh, for yourself. If you just think it's in your own best interest, or if you, you know, just, just are no longer interested in making things work with your wife or, or whatever, right. That's, that's always an option. You know, I'm not here to try and force you into some relationship that you don't want to be in. And I, I hope no one would want you to do, do that. But um, if this is something that's, that's interesting for you, it really does sound like you need to have a same team conversation with her. I don't know if you've had one of those in the past. My memory of your whole situation is a little bit foggy just with, you know, the fact that um, I haven't seen you on one of these live streams in, in a while. And just due to the fact that I've my life has been a little bit of a three ring circus recently. Um but uh, uh, it sounds like you do need to have a same team conversation and you do need to just, you know, ask her about this. In a lot of the things that we talk about, we talk about um, this idea of the gap. You know, she's doing she's behaving in, in some way and you don't know why. And so it's really easy for us to use our own fears, insecurities and limiting beliefs to fill in that gap. 
and say, oh, she's doing this because she doesn't care about me. She's doing this because she's trying to move on. She's doing this because um, she doesn't value me. She's doing this because she's met someone else. She's doing this because she's getting um, toxic advice from her toxic friend or something like that, right? And I don't know, I'm just making stuff up here. But you know, you could you could easily fill in the gap with your own fears, insecurities, and anxieties. But really, she's doing whatever she's doing for whatever reasons she's doing it for. And we could sit here and speculate on it. I could sit here and be like, oh, well, she's doing it because she obviously has an avoidant attachment style or because your situation is hopeless or because, um, you know, uh, uh, she, she, she's, a, she's a narcissist or something like that. But um, who knows, right? What I'd really recommend that you do is to, rather than try and fill in the gap yourself or find some third party to fill in the gap, actually talk with her about this. Do like what we just talked about with Alan, get into a state of rapport, and um, ask some, some some uncomfortable questions and then see where that takes you, okay? I um, hope that helps you out there, uh, Rideshare, if indeed that is your real name. Um, once again, everyone, if you like this video, please make sure you hit the thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. Please make sure you subscribe to this channel and uh, please make sure you hit that bell icon as well. Next up, I'd really like to invite you to watch a um, subliminal recording. Uh, I made this to kind of help you to program yourself mentally and emotionally to um, embody more of these qualities that we've talked about when it comes to letting go. This is an eight hour recording that you can listen to while you're sleeping. I'd recommend you do it for at least a month. Um, it's going to, you know, I'm basically going to help you by saying some affirmations in my smooth velvety voice and all that. Uh, <laughs> um, and it's going to help get into your unconscious mind while you're sleeping. You're going to sleep anyway, so you might as well do it. You can find that video right over here. Try it out tonight. Let me know in the comments what you think. Anyway, take care and I'll talk to you next time.